Hello friends, welcome back to A Nurse in the Kitchen. This is your friend, nurse, Chef Maggie, and I am back with another video. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different. Uh, as you know, I started this channel back in April, and I wanted to uh, coin the channel, brand the channel as a channel that is going to teach people how to cook, you know, basic cooking skills. And then we would be chatting about nurse related stuff. That's why the channel is called A Nurse in the Kitchen. You know, I'm a nurse, I'm in the kitchen, I'm cooking and I'm chatting with you. But what I have found is that uh, the length of the video, it's, it was a challenge for me because as I'm finished cooking, it's already 25, 30 minutes, and then I start chatting and it's another, you know, it was like the, the videos were like 40, 50 minutes long. And I'm thinking that it's just a little bit too long. Everybody's got a little bit of short attention span because we have so much going on. Even though it's your me time, but just looking at the length of the video probably is gonna say, ah oh boy, I don't have time for all of that. So I decided, I was just standing at the sink the other day and it's like, why don't you split them up? So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna do, if I'm gonna do a video on cooking something, it's gonna be just about cooking. If I'm doing a video about um, chatting about nursing, it's gonna be that. I also was challenged with the title of the videos because I would say breakfast in bed and then nurse chat, whatever the topic was. And in YouTube, you can't have any characters, you can't have apostrophe, you can't have hyphenation and any of that. So I think it's gonna be a little bit easier for me to do the, uh, the nursing separated from the cooking. I'm still a nurse, I'm still cooking, we're still gonna cook some yummy stuff, but I mean, the repertoire is so huge. There is so much to cook and to learn how to cook, we can learn together. And I had promised you I'm gonna bring some guests with me. You know, let's say my friend who is Puerto Rican, she wants to make uh, arroz con pollo. I mean, I can cook arroz con pollo, but probably not as good as a true Puerto Rican, right? So it's kind of nice to have that kind of chat. So I think if we, if we keep everything separated, it might be a little bit easier for people to catch because I am reaching out to two different um, uh, audiences you know I have my nurses and then I have the people who are just interested in the cooking and there is so much in terms of cooking out there so I thought just a nurse there is another channel about you know different channels of nurses who cook as well and they're just quite successful what I want to do in my nursing chat they have nursing chats as well is just tell you about my experience uh, as a nurse um, those of you who, who've heard the, maybe the second video, you know that I'm back in school. I know you're never too old to go to school. Look at it, you know. You have the bang under the eyes, the bags, the bang, the bags under the eye and the, and the line. You still can learn. You still can go to school. No one can tell you you can't. So today I'm starting a series on nursing supervision. As you guys know, I am working as a nursing supervisor. I've been a nurse, I've done med surge, I've done critical care, I've done home health for a long time. I used to own a home care agency, so I know a lot about home health. And um, then I was a director of nursing, and now I'm a supervisor. You notice that I'm kind of going down in scale <laughs> in importance. So it seems like uh, the, the the last of my career, I'm going to be an NP working in some maybe underserved area because uh, so much disparities and people without health care. I don't know. It's it's a it's a burden for me. So today we start maybe a three part series on nursing supervision. I know. I want to brand the channel as giving you tips to keep you from burning out. But this is not just the new nurses who are burning out. It's not just the nurses who've been in, in the profession a year or two who are finding it too hard for whatever reason and have, you know, thrown in the towel. You also have nurses who've been, who've been in for 10, 15, 20 years who are quitting as well. Not retiring but just fed up with the whole thing 
So today I want to focus on supervision because you know, we need supervisors. Um, there is so much that uh, organizations are responsible for and it hits them in the pocketbook. You know, if it's gonna hit reimbursement, it's important, okay? And people may know what to do, you just need an enforcer. You need somebody to make sure certain things are done, you know, in terms of your outcome, in terms of your processes and your protocols. And also to kind of manage the employees because trust me, I want to say maybe 80% of what the problems are in facilities is the people because you need them to do the job. Managing them is a whole lot of headache, okay? Because you can have 5,000 employees and maybe you have 25 problem employees and they kind of eat up a lot of time and resources because you have all the legalities that you have to worry about. You have to make sure everything is written down and everything is done properly. So you're kind of threading a very thin line. You have to be careful. So today I want to talk about, do you, do you have what it takes to be a supervisor? You know, after being in the industry for about over 30 years, I realized not everybody is cut out to be a manager or supervisor. You guys have had these managers and supervisors and you're like, oh my God, where did they find that person? They have no concept of what it is or how you manage people. Managing people is extremely difficult because you have to understand that every person is unique and different and you put 12 people together they have 12 different personalities they see things 12 different ways they react in 12 different ways so you have to deal with them in 12 different ways so you have baby boomers you have uh, generation X and then now you have the Millennials you can't approach a millennial like you approach somebody my age it just doesn't work so sometimes we throw in the towel because we are not equipped to understand how this person thinks and what would motivate her versus this person over here supervision requires uh, a, a separate not separate but a different set of skills remember i did the video on the nursing tra the traits that i feel this again this is just me maggie i feel would make you successful in your career not everybody who is an excellent nurse will make an excellent manager get that through your head they are unrelated okay and i don't mean you have to be mature or older like I am to be good at it. That's not what I'm saying. And you've heard the terms leaders are not born, they are made. Well, you can argue for or against that notion. I happen to believe that it's a mixture of the two. I have always been kind of a leader. And I remember way back when, when I was like in high school or primary care, I was always leading a group, whether it was in church or making decision or was it in the youth group, whether it was in my classroom. So there is a genetic predisposition for some people to be comfortable in certain roles. That doesn't mean you can't hone those skills. That doesn't mean you can't learn. You certainly can. So you may have somebody in their 20s who's an excellent manager. And you can have somebody who is in their 50s and they're horrible at it. How do you explain that, okay? So there has to be some genetic and, you know, certain personality traits that makes that person more successful. So don't think if you're working in nursing that uh, I've tried med surge, I've done OB, I've done psych, I've done home health, and I'm so fed up, so now I'm gonna be a, a manager. You might have think twice about that. Now, supervision and management, I need you to think carefully before you step into those shoes because it's difficult to make the transition from a bedside nurse into a manager. And what happens sometimes 
And once we talk about the characteristic, we'll talk about the problems you encounter and how you handle different types of problems. But the transition can be difficult because you're leaving a role and you're going into another role and you have your mandate from your manager above who tells you these are the things you're responsible for, but yet your coworkers you've been hanging out with for the last three years, all of a sudden, you're telling them what to do and they're not very receptive to it. So that can be a challenge. So the first thing I'd like to um, tell you that I feel like you need to have to make you, well, the first thing I want to say seriously is you need to know who you are. You need to know if you have what it takes. Don't think that this is, well, there's nothing else I'm interested in. Therefore, I'm going to try this. No. Okay, so invest in thinking, they have free personality profile testing you could do online. It will tell you what your strengths and weaknesses are. And these things I'm gonna mention, again, like I say, I'm gonna spread it over three weeks. Um, you need to ask yourself, do I have these particular traits? Number one, you need to be knowledgeable about the job, okay? So if you're a nurse, you know what we're all about, taking care of patients, but now you're gonna wear a different hat. You're gonna understand what it takes to bring these services to the patient. You're gonna understand um, licensing. You're gonna understand regulations. You're gonna understand reimbursement. You're gonna to have to really hone quality improvement and patient outcome and all the stuff that affect how well this patient does while he's under your care. Now, it's nice to have the recognition that maybe you have your facility has a low infection rate, but now it's not just nice. You don't just get a piece of paper that you can put on your wall. It is directly related to how much reimbursement that Medicare, Medicaid, and your insurance companies are gonna provide. So. If you want to keep your job and you want to secure your uh, colleague's job and your manager and whoever is involved, we need to make sure we get the highest rate of reimbursement possible, right? So that means everything we do that is affecting this patient's care and how well they do their outcome becomes your responsibility as well as, as a manager as a supervisor, even though the nurses at the bedside may not understand that, your job is to impart that, the importance of their intervention, their action on the bottom line, okay? Because there's a disconnect there most often. So you need to understand, you need to know. And one of the, one of the ways you can really increase your knowledge in that area is through some kind of training program. Now, if a facility is uh, offering you a supervisor job, manager job, hopefully they have a management training that you can go to where you can have those moments, you know, where the light bulb goes off or those aha moments. It's like, oh my God, I didn't realize that. And then you, 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 you're going to internalize those. You're going to practice those. You're going to include them in your everyday interactions. So knowledgeable is very important. Number two is confidence. Confidence is so vital to a supervisor or manager role. And you know, there is a fine line. I remember when my son was playing basketball and um, they would lose and I would say, oh, it's just a game. Oh, mom, you don't understand. It's not just a game. And then they would, when they won, they would just keep yelling and glory in it and I would say you need you to calm down this is you know you're being cocky and he was like no this is confidence I'm not being cocky well you know I get it now there's a fine line between confidence and being and cockiness and being cocky but you have got to be confident and project confidence to your manager and to the people that you supervise if they don't feel like they can trust you, that you know what you're doing, you've already lost them. And it goes about respect. Do they respect you? Do they trust your judgment as a clinician? And you have that's why you have to be clinically strong. Not necessarily that you have to be 
I've seen people who are not nurses manage nurses very well because they understand the principles of management and they surround themselves with the clinicians with the know-how. You can do that. But I find that having that um, clinical knowledge is super important. It's not, you know, the the la you know the number one thing that you need but i personally feel that it's important do i know everything about nursing no i've been in critical care and home care so i don't understand i'm not as strong in certain areas but if i can find information you do not want to put yourself out there as being an expert in everything those are people that you run from because nobody is an expert in everything even physicians make referrals to specialists right so understand that mindset but you need to be confident and project confidence so that your people those you supervise they feel comfortable they feel like if there's a situation if there is an emergency you got it you know how to prioritize okay you know how to delegate so confidence is very important the other thing that i number three remember i have like nine or ten number three is being approachable you and then that goes together with like people skills for example right if you are in a position of authority it's up to you to create those relationships with the people that you supervise. You have to be intentional about approaching them, creating rapport, talking to them. Now, when you first get into a job, it takes a little while. And I am experiencing this in, my, in this new position. People need some time to get to know you, to know whether they can trust you. Um, some of them are just saying, eh, let's see how long he or she gonna last. And some of them make it their business to give you a hard time. And as a supervisor, you have to have the fortitude. That means you have to have a strong backbone to understand that this is the process that you have to go through until you've learned, you've earned uh, their trust. So you can't take everything personally. You have to be approachable. I mean, good morning. Can I help you with anything? What's going on? Uh, you know, just keep the communication going because I particularly find that once I am intentional about creating rapport, find out what they like, um, you know, um, ordering in for people who can congregate and eat. I mean, I think food is a great equalizer. I mean, it kind of brings people together. But even that sometimes is not enough. So if you get into a new position, give yourself the time to build those relationships. It's not gonna happen overnight. Some buildings are tougher than others. Some units are tougher than others. You are always gonna find difficult people. And remember the first video I did about nursing is like expect those difficult people, not just difficult patients, but coworkers. Oh my God, they can be such a challenge. And you have got to be able to understand that it comes with the territory. Some people are just mean. They may not like you for who you are. They may not like you for your ethnicity. They may not like you because of your educational background. They feel threatened by you. You can incorporate all that and just say, okay, I'm owning it. How can I go around this? How can I solve this situation? So you have to be a problem solver and you have to be able to be independent, thinking independently, not taking everything personally and letting it hurt you, taking it home, having a headache, your blood pressure goes up. No, 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 you're not going to survive. You will not survive. All right. So I don't want to go any further today. Remember, the first one I said, try to get one of those assessment tests so you know who you are. 
be knowledgeable if you're considering uh, a supervisory position learn as much as you can read there is so much information online right now you don't even need somebody to put you in a classroom you can learn on your own be confident project confidence speak confidently without being cocky you want to be nice you want to smile you want to talk to people don't walk around with your nose up in the air and think you're all that even though some people will criticize you will say that you think you're all that but just check yourself okay and then the last one is being approachable a smile a hello how you doing how was your week um i go around sometime and i'll just touch someone on the shoulder i say are you doing okay is everything all right you know i'm checking in but if they don't think you care then i'm gonna talk to you um Although sometimes it can be difficult with some folks, like I said, you're just going to find all kinds of personalities and that's the challenge to be able to relate. Some people would accept you on day one. Some people to, could be two years. It's still a, still a fight. Okay. So don't be discouraged. We need supervisors. We need managers. So you just need to know, do I have what it takes? and you have to be on a road to self-improvement. You cannot get comfortable. You have to constantly be learning how to deal with people, how to deal with the patient, how to deal with the situation. And you know, I'll tell you some funny stories of things that happened to me as a supervisor, because as a supervisor, you're a nurse, uh, you, uh, you're, the, um, you're an electrician, you're, you're the janitor, uh, you're the counselor. I mean, you wear many hats, okay? Because if something's happening, you need to take care of it, right? Okay, so I'm going to stop right here. 21 minutes. So this is one of the shortest videos I've done. I hope you've learned something today. Remember, you have one of the best jobs in the world. And if there is anything I can do to encourage you, I'd like to do it. Remember that your job allows you to touch lives. And to me, that's the highest honor. I will see you next week. Next week, definitely, we're going to be cooking something. And hopefully, I can do two videos. God bless you. I love you. Au revoir. À la prochaine.